Welcome to Beating Cancer Daily. Beating stage four cancer for 30 years still takes my breath away every time I say it. I'm Saren, founder of the Comedy Cures Foundation, and I hope you'll join me for just a few minutes daily for the next 365 days so we may laugh, learn, maybe cry a little as we live our best days beating cancer daily together. Did you or someone you love just get diagnosed with cancer? I remember that day and I get called and I get written to every single day with friends, friends of friends, colleagues, friends of colleagues, friends of family, family members saying, I just heard that I have cancer, or I just heard that someone I love has cancer. So I help people every single day get through the worst time of their life. And I'm telling you that it gets better. (laughs) I know that's crazy because we're all so scared of cancer treatment, But I truly believe that the first 24 hours, 48 hours, week, month, whatever it is that it takes you to get your plan in order for how you're going to approach your cancer treatment, whatever it is, even if you decide that you're not going to do cancer treatment, I have no judgment in what path you choose traditional, holistic, a combination of both, no judgment. But until you make your decision of how you're going to proceed and what your team is going to be, this is living H-E-double-L. And I, I hold people's hands through it. And I'm telling you, it gets easier. I know that sounds ridiculous because we all have fear of potentially losing our hair or having surgery or having anesthesia or having radiation or doing chemotherapy. I get it. But at least there's a plan that you can make decisions on and take action or not take action and then discuss the emotional and physical ramifications of that. But when you're just living in this abyss, this quicksand of, I have cancer, and you hear it in your head in the most horrible way. And you can listen to another podcast episode that I did called The Cancer Voice, because that's exactly what it sounded like for me when I was told I had cancer. So let's just back up a little bit. I remember one night a person called me on my cell phone and I was shocked that someone had my cell phone because I really save it for family. And this man was very, very upset, partially crying. And he could barely get out the words that he just found out that his wife had advanced cancer. And they had a bunch of kids. They were a young couple. And I said to him, that I know this is such a terrible moment. Everything I just said to you, I promise you, this is the worst. Let's just get a plan in place. And I promise you, it gets easier. And so he kept talking to me and I asked him, you know, how he got my phone number. And he said, well, I called my rabbi because I wanted to seek guidance for why this happened and what I should do and how I could support my wife. And my rabbi didn't even stop to help me. He just gave me your cell phone number and said, call Saren. He didn't even explain. He just said, call Saren and Saren will help you. Anyway, I helped this gentleman through this conversation. What I asked this gentleman was, Tell me about your family. Tell me about your marriage. Tell me about your wife. Tell me about your life. And so he started to talk about it. And as soon as he started to talk to me about it, you could see the fear of cancer releasing 
because he was focusing on something else. But once I learned more about him, I could understand the best way to help him. And what I said was, you're going to dance with your wife at your children's bar mitzvahs, and you're going to watch them get married, and you're going to dance at their weddings, and we're going to get you through this. Now, most people don't say that on the first night that somebody is diagnosed with advanced cancer. But what I found is that if you can show someone a life beyond cancer, then they can start to imagine a life beyond cancer. And when you're diagnosed and you don't have a plan, it's really hard to think of anything else except dying from cancer. I also did an episode called Your 2020 Cancer-Free Vision. It's episode one, actually. And it works in an amazing way to get you out of the stranglehold that cancer has on you when you're diagnosed. It really does feel like emotional, physical, and mental quicksand. But I guarantee you, it's the worst part. We're going to laugh again. We're going to dance again. And we're going to have a life outside of cancer treatment. But the best thing to do is to get your first opinion, get your second opinion, and make the plan that feels right for you. If you can do that, then we can start to anchor and build your life outside of cancer treatment, which can be full and abundant. And I'm not sugarcoating or or putting on rose-colored glasses about cancer treatment. I'm just telling you that the feeling that you have no roadmap, no team is the worst part of this thing, in my opinion. So the quickest advice I can give you to help you deal with this initial shock of your diagnosis is that if you have anyone within your reach, you know, six degrees of separation, who has successfully gone through cancer treatment, reach out to them and ask if you can have 15 minutes of their time just to get some guidance on who are good doctors in your local area. If you don't have someone within your inner circle that's had cancer or knows someone that's had cancer, then you should definitely reach out to one of your local cancer organizations, one of the social support groups. There's Cancer Care, there's Gilda's Club, there's your local hospitals, cancer support groups. There's so many, and they're very individualized ones too, depending on what cancer you're diagnosed with. And a lot of them have social workers and outreach teams or survivor mentors that they can connect you with. It's really good to have someone that's been at this rodeo before to help guide you to at least getting your first doctor's appointment and then your second opinion. Once you get into the cancer universe at a hospital or facility, then they have support systems built in to that. Social workers and dietitians, nutritionists, patient navigators that you can speak to. And I just mentioned patient navigators. Patient navigators are people who can actually help you through your cancer journey. There are paid ones and unpaid ones. And depending on how you want to approach that, you can also seek support that way. It's really, really helpful if you have a friend or family member who's a great researcher and they'll do some of that legwork for you. So you can just try to relax and spend some time with loved ones and not have to be searching morning, noon, and night for what your plan's going to be. Some people love action and research I was one of those people, so I wanted to do it, 
but I had a really good friend named Elise, who was a professional journalist, and she really stepped in to help me build my plan. So I wasn't all alone in the process, even though I was a single mom going through a divorce. So I'll do another episode where I go into more detail on real strategic steps on how to build your plan. But I just really wanted this episode to be for people who get diagnosed and they're really terrified and they just need to hear that it's okay to be terrified and to know that it does get easier once you have a plan. So the gentleman that I told you, the complete stranger who called me to tell me his wife had been diagnosed with advanced cancer, well, let me tell you that it's been many, many years since that phone call, and I have been invited to all three boys' bar mitzvahs, and I got the benefit and the joy to watch them celebrate with their children and I also am waiting for the first wedding invitation. The oldest is now in college, and it's just been a complete joy-filled miracle to help their family through this journey. And his wife, who went through cancer treatment for stage three cancer, she has become a trained patient advocate and is helping many, many patients through their journey. I just wanted to share that with you because it's such a full circle moment for me to see a family that I helped now going on to help so many other people. So I would love, love, love to hear how you're putting your plan together, what suggestions you had and what you did to help yourself cope through or someone you love cope through the initial stages of your diagnosis before you had your treatment plan. I learned from you too, and we can share this with the world. So go to comedycures.org and you can record a message to me there or write to me. See you tomorrow. Have a blessed day. It was so great connecting with you today. If you'd like to connect more, go to comedycures.org and check out the Beating Cancer Daily membership levels. It is so fun to meet up with all of you at our many different events. We have live virtual Q&A sessions with me. We have live Comedy Cures comedy events, live health builder workshops with Jackie, Brian, Aaron, and myself a robust monthly newsletter, plus much more. So just go to comedycures.org and look for the membership level that feels right for you. And don't forget, you can also give one as a gift to your patient if you're a doctor, to a friend, to a family member. It really makes a very unique and personal gift. That's comedycures.org and sign up today. Thanks so much. See you tomorrow. Guess what time it is. It's time for me to read the disclaimer. Beating Cancer Daily and the Membership Circle are not in lieu of medical advice or treatment. They are for entertainment purposes only. Please consult your healthcare team to review your best strategy. Thanks for listening.